our next speaker is Ms. Celia Niles. She is a certified hypnotherapist who studied international relations and political science at UCLA. She has traveled across the world looking at communication styles and different cultures with a focus on how globalization and technology have affected and disrupted these processes. She is also an artist, film director, and actor. Hey guys, sorry, I'm really 80, so I can't do the podium stuff. Uh, so my topic is, which I'm covering, or Rachel's covering, uh, is how technology and social media uh, hypnotize us to hand over our privacy. Now, um, I'm not really that much involved in tech, uh, but I am a hypnotherapist, and I can tell you that everybody can be hypnotized, and is hypnotized daily, especially by technology and social media. Um, so let's, oh, how does this, how do I change? Okay, next slide. And that's uh, hypnotherapists. I thought they were funny, so I put those images on there. Uh, and then, um, so, uh, have you guys ever been at a place with your friends and you notice that you're the only one not on your phone? Right? And then you're just like waiting there and you're saying at some point they have to lift their heads and look at you, but they just don't. They don't, they're oblivious to everything. And you're waiting there and you're starting to get irritated and you're getting really annoyed and you just start tapping your fingers and you start coughing, but they're so in the zone they don't even notice what's going on, right? And then at that point, the waiter comes and they lift their heads or not. And then they're like, oh, we haven't even looked at the menu because we the well, first thing we did when we sat here was be on our phones. So at that point, you're just hangry and you want to bite their heads off. And then the waiter leaves and the way they look up at you is to like, look at each other and be like, what's wrong with her? So you're the odd person out. You're the weirdo for wondering why is everybody else on their phones not talking to each other. Uh, and that's because everybody else is in hypnosis and you are not. So. Um, Hypnosis has uh, influenced us so much in our lives in such subtle ways and we don't realize. Technology constantly hypnotizes us on a daily basis. Uh, and for example, have you ever walked and somebody almost crashed into you? Walking and being on their phones? Or, hello? Okay. Or being on their phones. Um, or it also defines our identity nowadays. For example, uh, I had a friend, my boyfriend gets really mad when I say this all the time, uh, and we were talking and I started complaining about this person who did something to me. And he was like, well, is it because maybe people don't like you? And I was like, why do you think people don't like me? And he said, oh, because you don't get that many likes on your Facebook and your Instagram. And I was like, oh, that, that's, that's how you know if people like me or not, based off of my popularity on, on Instagram and social media. That's, you're completely right. And even though that's ridiculous, it says a lot about how social media and technology influences and defines our identity, our very own identity. Like you add a person on Facebook, and if they have 300 friends, you immediately assume that they're an introvert versus maybe they don't like being on Facebook. Or if they have 3,000 friends, you assume they're popular or an extrovert, even though that might be their job, and that's why they have to do that. Right, so now that I gave some examples on how uh, social media and technology can influence us and hypnotize us, let's go on to the how that occurs, okay? Can you change that? Oh, and the zombies, yeah, those are really cool. So um, this is us and how we walk and we look like zombies and I just put those pictures because they're awesome. Uh, you can change the light. Okay, so this is what we hypnotherapists like to call the theory of mind, okay? So this round thing over here is your mind, and we're all born with this one basic thing, which is the primitive mind, which is our fight and flight mechanisms, okay? So back in cave times, when you saw a dinosaur, you sprinted out, that's your flight, and when you saw a mammal that you could eat, I don't know what existed back then, I'm making this up like a deer or something, uh, you fought it and you hunted it and you ate it, right? Uh, now, in, after we're born, till about eight, we take in everything as absolute truth. And that's, oh, that went away. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> 
from when we're born until we're about eight, we are very hypersuggestible and we take in everything as absolute truth. Uh, studies have actually shown that from the time we're born to, to we're about three, uh, we function in a delta brainwave, which if you guys know is basically when we're asleep. So we're sleepwalking humans, sleepwalking little humans. Now from the time we're three till we're about eight or nine, we function on a theta brainwave. For those of you who don't know, that's the state of hypnosis and trance-like meditation. Uh, and that's why little kids believe in everything. They believe in Santa Claus, they believe in like all these cool stuff, they have all this cool imagination, right? And those are the ages where we start to form our subconscious programming. Okay, so that's when we have the positive and negative associations that we learn. So maybe we like chocolate, let's say, and we don't like broccoli. Maybe we like to get spanked or not, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that's when we form everything. Now, from when we're about eight to nine, we start functioning on an alpha wave, which is how we are right now, I think, unless you're in hypnosis. And that's when we start forming our conscious mind, which is only 12% of our mind, which is our decision making, our reasoning, our logic, our willpower, and all those things that never really work, right? Uh, so then your mind says, wait a minute, I have to protect what I've been learning this whole time. So I'm gonna form a filter that's called the critical mind, okay? And that forms as a bodyguard to protect the subconscious programming, okay? Now, that's how our mind works. But how do we go into hypnosis, okay? So let's say you are in your day life and you're walking around and you see all these ads everywhere, you're getting overwhelmed, you're in your car, you're stuck in traffic, you're just going crazy, right? So your mind goes on overload, and what happens is that the primitive mind, the fight-flight system, or otherwise the sympathetic nervous system gets triggered, and the mind goes on overload, so it takes up the flight, and it goes back to theta state, which is what we call hypnosis. Okay, so it's its way of escaping reality, because there's only so many ways you can smash your laptop before you go broke, so it decides instead to just relax. Uh, and we're, we're in that state, as we said, we're very hyper-suggestible, so we start taking in things as more truth. Uh, that's why when we watch TV, uh, it has proven with studies that we go into this theta wave, and when you see all these ads and all the subliminal messages, that's why you start to believe those things and start feeling like as a consumer and that you have to buy all these things, right? So that's how that works. Uh, so now let me give an example of that. Uh, let's say you're at home and you're bored and you're on your Facebook and you say, okay, I'm going to be there for like, I don't know, two minutes and the next thing you know, two hours go by, right? And you're clicking away, clicking away and then you see an ad that's personalized just for you. Okay, that ad is based off of the interest you have on Facebook, um, your hidden timeline, what you Google, um, the search engines, um, which mo most people don't think much of it, but that's really scary. Like they're monitoring everything that you're doing and they're creating these ads to personalize to you. Okay, so you're there, you're clicking away, and you see like, oh, the new iPhone that makes coffee now or something, I don't know, coffee maker iPhone. And the, you're like, you know what, I don't really like coffee. So you keep clicking away, and then at that point, your mind is so overloaded and you're in hypnosis that you look at it again and you say, you know what, maybe I can check it out. You click the ad, and then it starts talking about the benefits of coffee, right? So how new studies show that coffee is good for your heart, and it speeds up your metabolism, and all those things. So you're saying, you know what, maybe I should buy this thing, because maybe it's time to start drinking coffee. So you click on the ad, and then it says, do you want to create your own account, or do you want to go via Facebook, right? And at that point, you're so in hypnosis, you're like, I just want to buy the damn thing, okay? So you're like, connect with Facebook. You connect with Facebook, and then the thing says um, that it's allowed to post on your behalf and to have access to your photos, your information, and everything. And you just, like most people, are like, okay, allow. And they just do that. So now your Facebook is connected to this website that has access to all your information, right? Then it says that you want to pay credit card or go via PayPal. 
So then you go via PayPal, which is what most people do, and now this website has connections to your PayPal accounts, your credit cards, your information, your photos, and you could post that you're a terrorist for Al-Qaeda if it wants, because it has permission to do so. But you really don't care because you're in hypnosis. So you buy the thing and you're all happy about your purchase for about like two minutes before you start getting buyer's remorse, right? So then you're sitting there and then three days later people start calling these like unknown numbers with voicemails and you start getting all these spam emails and you're like, I didn't go on these websites. How do these people have my number? Well, that's because these websites, these companies are selling your information for a dollar a piece. That's how much you're selling it for, a dollar. And it's all in the privacy policy they have that says that they don't have to protect your information that most people don't even notice. And they actually did a study that asked um, Americans, let me find it here, um, it said, okay, so they asked Americans, uh, when a company posts a privacy policy, it ensures that the company keeps confidential on the info it collects on users. And 52% of Americans agreed. Okay, that's over half the population of the United States thinking that privacy policy means that their information is kept private, which is not true. Okay, so it's not just hypnosis, it's hypnosis um, coupled with ignorance, basically. And then another study says that 54% of Americans say it would be difficult to find tools and strategies that would enhance their privacy online. I mean, you can even Google it. If we think technology is that bad, at least it has some benefits. Google how to, it's not that hard. We have that in our hands today, right? Um, I want to give another great example of how uh, technology and the government has hypnotized us to hand over our privacy once this light gets going. Oh, damn it. Okay. Oh, there we go. How do I do this? Flutter. This one? This one? This one. Yeah. Okay. Can you make it bigger? So, okay. Okay, so we have 9-11, right? And um, it's everywhere. Uh, buildings are burning, and everywhere you turn, it's on TV, it's in the newspapers, it's everywhere. Everywhere you turn is 9-11. And what did we learn about hypnosis? Anyways, uh, what did we learn about hypnosis, right? It's triggered when we're overwhelmed, when we're anxious, when we're fearful, right? So 9-11 happens and everybody's running around in terror. They're fearful, they're scared, they're just, they're just really scared for their lives. So then the American government comes in and says, have no fear, we will pass the Patriot Act where you, we will seize and monitor all your information, all your emails, all your phone calls so that we may protect you, okay? And now Americans been in hypnosis because what we learned is when people are fearful and anxious and overwhelmed and overloaded, they go back into that theta state where they're very hypersuggestible and they believe everything they hear. They say, okay, here, here's everything. So they pass the Patriot Act, okay? And then um, Facebook comes around, okay, which I call the voluntary indefinite filing, okay, because once you create the account, all the information you put is stored there and is never deleted, even if you delete it. So your information is there indefinitely, okay? So now the government with the Patriot Act has access to all this information of yours forever because it's stored there indefinitely, okay? And then that is how we unconsciously hand over our information without realizing it. Can you go on the next slide? So that's uh, Obama. I had really high hopes for him. Uh, not really, but um, so that's, it's like a big brother Orson Welles kind of deal going on and people are not realizing this. We're handing over our information, we're connecting links with websites and social media, so now everything is connected, so now anybody can find every little detail about what we do, about our tastes, about our interests. Targets knows when you're pregnant before you're pregnant because it monitors the things you buy. So pregnant women start to uh, be really sensitive to smells and they don't like uh, scented things, right? So they start switching from um, scented lotions and things like that to unscented stuff. And that's when Target notices that they might be pregnant so they start sending them diaper ads. And that's how scary this is. Uh, let's go to the, where was I? Okay, so, um, and then, uh, can you go on the next slide? 
So now we have uh, China, right? The great firewall of China that everybody hates because what the firewall does is it infringes um, freedoms, right? It, it, it um, how do you say it in English? It confines their people in, in, in one little way and controls what they do. So during the Hong Kong demonstrations, they um, blocked their own social media and blogging sites so that uh, the Chinese citizens don't see the protests because it was very similar to what happened in the Tiananmen Square back in 1989, right? But I have a question. If you were China, okay, and CIA knocked on your door and said, hey, can you um, hand us all your information, your citizens' information, your culture, your politics, would you as China say yes? No, you'd probably flip them off and slam the door at their face, right? So that's what China is doing when they block Facebook. They don't want some American-based company to have access to their information because they know the Patriot Act, with the Patriot Act, that the American government can seize any information on Facebook. So why would they allow that? Okay, and I'm not being for China or any of that. They, they do, like, they, com they control um, their citizens, but you have to understand their mindset coming from a country that's one of the few standing communist countries out there, right? Uh, and I want to end with, okay, so we get it, people get hypnotized by social media and technology, so what can we do about it, right? Um, that was the end, you changed it, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> so um, there's only two things we can, I mean, there's more things we can do, but there's two things I want to talk about. Uh, one is very simple, it's to stay out of hypnosis. And if you wonder, okay, how do I do that? It's so simple, it's ridiculous. As easy as it is to go into hypnosis, it's as easy to get out of it, okay? So all you have to do is what we call breaking state. Okay, so if you're in your computer for too long, snap out of it, get up, do some jumping jacks, count yourself out. Just literally distract yourself away from what you were doing. It is so easy, okay? And the second thing is being aware and educated, okay? We have technology which has negative consequences, but it also has a lot of positive things for us we have easy access to a lot of information so we no longer have an excuse to be ignorant okay and even though the information still gets filtered in certain ways we still have access to a lot of it so we need to stay aware and educated and then in turn we need to educate other people about their safety and what they can do to protect themselves and their own privacy and they need to start from younger age from children and like if people have children they have to teach them they're on their iPads all day playing Candy Crush while they're doing that, they should teach them a couple things about technology. So those are the two things that I recommend people should do uh, to protect themselves. And like you said, you know, everything else is about people and caring about each other and you know, teaching each other and creating awareness. So 